So this is the Fantex NV9, uh, just launched actually a few days back. This is Fantex's new flagship model uh, for computer cases. It's actually pretty heavy too. The same brand that's brought you the old, like the Fantex Elite crazy cases and stuff, but this was gonna be a little bit more like mainstream-ish than like the Elite was. But being the new flagship model, let's open it up and let's take a look. So huge thanks to Fantex for sending it over. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. Wish you didn't grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. So the exact model number of this one is PHNV923TG underscore DBK01. Why do we care about that? We actually don't. I just, I've seen other people talk about model numbers. ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> I said it's a little bit on the heavier side than cases have been these days. So this is a full tower case, whereas like the NV7 is a mid tower. Um, so this is gonna be a lot more friendly when it comes to large components like air-cooled 40 series graphics cards, water cooling, um, EATX motherboards. It's got like a, ow, every time, every fucking time I do a case review, I get shocked. That's shocking. Okay, this is not, this one's clearly not just like another 011 dynamic sort of layout. I think what we have to come to sort of, and I'll explain why it's not just that, but, Ugh, my goodness, it's it's weighty because these are aluminum panels here. They, I think they're aluminum. Actually, no, they're probably steel. Uh, this layout now with the motherboard wall in the back allowing for radiators and fans and stuff. That's just the, the way cases are now. It's like, there's only so many ways you can build a rectangle. And having fans on the front and just a standard cube slash rectangle box is kind of like, this is the evolution of that now. So I think you should just come to expect this space in the back is always gonna be utilized now for fans or distro plates or whatever it may be. Um, moving on, the porosity though of the ventilation is probably a less than 50%, honestly. Here's what's one of the things that's different about this case. It's got a panel on the rear. So this is also gonna make all your cables and stuff interesting because there's a grommet under here that everything's gonna have to go up through. So it's a door, as you can see, that opens. Um, we've got room here for multiple fans, even probably even a 240 radiator can go right here. You can even fit two 140s right here. So already, already in terms of cooling, uh, and when it comes to like just the amount of um, overall fan installation you can put on this, it's pretty nuts. Now, one thing I wanna point out too though, is I know I just said that grommet's not very big. Um, that is a usable area right here, but each one of these are also like a cable comb. So if you had mice cables and stuff, you could each have each one of these have a separate wire coming through because the door does not interfere with this. They'd just be going up through there. So, and it's kind of neat because it would actually make it probably look a little more organized with like almost like just a big fat cable comb for all of your wires going into the case. So that's nice to see. Now on the back here, obviously you'll have your two fans. I would definitely populate two exhaust fans on here if you're utilizing bottom intakes and side intakes. Um, if you put too much fan here on exhaust and you'll, you could end up with negative pressure. So you're gonna wanna balance that. But check this out. Um, this area right here, let's talk about this hole. What is this hole for? Do you know what I see when I look at that hole? <laughs> Keep your mind clean. I see a drain port for a water cooled system which is, uh, Fantex has actually always been good about putting ports in their cases to, to make it, the layout make sense in terms of like water cooling and stuff. So you could have a, like a bulkhead fitting there with a, like a plug on it, a drain port directly on the other side of it, and then tubing going to that. So you could uncap it, open the port, or put a tube on there, open the port, and drain right into a uh, reservoir or a jug. So that would actually just be a nice, that's a nice thing to have. Um, Fantex, like I said, this isn't the first time I've done that. Like the Elite did that. And then the, um, I can't remember what the model number was, but like the successor to the Elite, the Elite also had intakes on the top and pour, uh, drains on the bottom, which was kind of nice. Um, power supply, as you can see on here, goes way up here. So that is uh, more than likely what this grommet's gonna be for, to be honest. It's gonna be for like power cable for that. But obviously we have cable combs right here too. 
So you'd be able to bring the cables up into here and plug in. So everything would be nice and cable managed on the back. Uh, anyway, enough talking about the back. We do have one captive screw right here. Hey, it wasn't put on with by the Hulk at the factory. And that's for our glass, which slides out. Holy crap, is this heavy. This is a very heavy tempered glass side panel. Uh, set that aside. So here's the top. Um, as you can see, just nice matte stamped steel. Porosity on this is, I, I don't have a way to measure it, but I can tell you there is some restriction, but that's because this one mesh is intended to double as a filter. So there's that. Remember what I said about Fantex always putting an intake port on the top or fill port? There it is. So very water cooling in mind. One other thing I forgot to point out on the back. So there's one captive screw on here that takes off this cover, uh, which is just a decorative cover, to be honest. Uh, if you want a better airflow, you could technically take that off and leave it. And then when you close that, you'll just have less restriction. There's not a lot of restriction with this, but there's some and it adds up if you have this plus that. And if you put radiators on the other side, um, that's obviously gonna lead to resistance. So I just wanted to point that out. Now you can fit two 120s and two 140s there, no problem. Now when it comes to radiators though, there's an extra overhang on the rad. So for instance, here's a, a 240 rad. And what I mean by overhang is the fans only fit within this portion of the radiator, but you have the end tanks on either side. So this one's longer because it has to be able to fit the fittings and the ports, right? And then this one's got a short end tank on it because it has to be able to direct the flow back to the rad. So it goes in one side, goes down the, you know, it's a cross or a U flow. So it comes in, goes around, goes back out. So this will fit in there no problem. I mean, that wouldn't go on this side, but I'm just showing that that'll fit without an issue. If I go on the other side, it's not any sort of a problem at all because the motherboard is mounted so low in the case. And I do love that the motherboard is mounted low because the motherboard itself these days, especially with the graphics card and everything attached to it, is so heavy. It's so much heavier than the power supply. Usually power supplies are put in the bottom of a case for ballast weight to keep the weight low so it doesn't want to tip. But now it's actually heavier with graphics cards and motherboards these days with how big, big the heat sinks and stuff are in MOBOs to put the MOBO down low. This is actually almost like a reverse layout from where the Elite was. The Elite had this same kind of a panel right here at the bottom with the motherboard up high. So it's almost like they learned from that design and they sort of flipped it. Anyways, uh, you can see right there, a 240 fits zero problem whatsoever. Plenty of clearance with everything around it. Um, but I'm curious now as to whether or not a 280 is gonna fit. Now a 280 is two 140 millimeter fans with all the extra stuff I talked about. So as you can see, it is definitely bigger uh, in every dimension in terms of surface area. So depth, most rads are 30 mil. So you have them up to 40 mil, 50 mil, 60 mil, 80 mil. So the question is, is this gonna fit and still give us room for our ports to clear everything? Okay, yes, you can. Does it line up on the backside? Holy crap. I have never, that fits like a glove. I have never done a build where I could have a, a rear 280 rad. I really think I'm gonna build in this. You know what, for, for Chris's build, I think this is what we're gonna do. I have a friend I'm gonna be doing a high-end water-cooled build for. I think I'm gonna try and convince him to use this case. I think this one's gonna be a lot of fun to build in. Uh, we were considering using the Lee and Lee V3000 Plus for its size, but that's gonna be ridiculous. I think this is the one to go with. It'd be fun to do a bottom 420 rad. So as you can see in the bottom and the top, you can fit three 140 millimeter fan rads. That's a 420. So we could go 420 at the bottom, 420 at the top, 280 in the back, and then have this 4090. He already has his parts. Like he, he's, he's a system he's already been running. So um, we would just be doing a water cool build for it. So I would, it's a 4090. So I, I would definitely probably use this case. There's something we need to test here though. Um, when it comes to top and bottom, it's a single piece. None of this comes out. There's no screws you can undo to bring out the, the top panel mounted to the rad or the AIO or fans or whatever and put it back in. So you've got to work on it in the case like this. But the bottom panel, however, is removable. It's got a thumb screw that comes out right there. And it slides over and out. So you can see it's got these like rubber grommets. Now the nice thing about that is it isolates vibration from the rest of the chassis since it's down low in the case. It could be possible to have vibrations on your table and nobody wants that. Um, so as you can see, you've got multiple mounting options in terms of offset, as well as how wide you can go. This is one of those panels though, I would almost per like personally modify if I knew I was gonna be using like a 420 only. And I would probably 
Dremel across the extra rows to get them out of there just so I don't have any blocked airflow. Because you do have this vent on the bottom as well. And there is a fan filter. Comes out the backside. So you have a fan filter too. So that's a lot of restriction that can add up if you have this and then you have, or you have this and then you have this and then you have the radiator and you have these. That can all add up. So these are just mods I would probably do. One thing that will make this interesting though, building in this, I'm not sure how well it shows up on camera, but the bottom piece is not, it is not flat. In fact, you can even see the cut right here. It is at this angle. I'm not sure why. Maybe for decoration. Maybe make the parts easier to see. It might even, might even honestly make air a little easier to bleed as long as I have the outlet for the rad on the, the side that's a little higher because air wants to go up, right? Air wants to climb. So this is interesting. It'll be, inter it'll be fun to build because then it's gonna have, I'm gonna have some angles I have to deal with on tubing. But now I'm starting to visualize this build. I'm gonna test something with this, this motherboard slot here in a second because this overhang is my concern for a lot of modern motherboards. Now, in terms of going stupid radiator layout, it's like, would I go 280, 420, 420, 480? Because it does look like you can fit a 480 right here. Possibly, this might get in the way. You can, add, oh, this removes, this comes off. So, okay, you can fit a 480 there. But you know what? You know why I won't do that? Because that's where I'll utilize like the pump reservoir combo and just put that there. Plenty of intake on the bottom. If I, as long as I keep these rear fans slower than the intake on the bottom, uh, we'll be able to keep it uh, nice and balanced with airflow. Also too, this right here is an RGB ring. Uh, so this lights up RGB all the way around. That's what makes it the DRGB aspect of it. Let's look at the backside now. Uh, yeah, this does require a tool to get off, which I think is kind of weird um, that everything else is toolless, but I digress. So this right here has a thumb screw. You can see this whole thing does come out, which allows us to be able to take it out, mount it to the rad or distro plate or whatever we're doing. This is a door. This allows you to mount SSDs on the inside right here. You would have the cables facing this way. That's why you have this indentation so that your cables can come up through there, your SATA power, SATA plugs, and then you can close that out of the way. So that'll fit one, two, three, four drives. Yeah, four drives. This will also fit an additional two. You can take this off for extra clearance if you needed to mount like an RGB controller or something like that. Power supply goes up here. We do have a built-in fan hub and controller. So on the top, we have our power button and then we also have our RGB control and fan control. So there is an RGB controller built in, but it does utilize JST. So that's JST right there. Um, like I said, that's, that's technically the appropriate like universal header, if you will. Uh, it's just a lot of brands aren't utilizing that. So in terms of front panel connectors, right? Here's our USB three right here. Obviously you can see the cable channel that is built into the case that was being utilized right there. We have extra tie downs here and here. We do have a motherboard connector cable right here, um, which is probably gonna be in the accessory box. That'll be for connecting it to your motherboard so that you can have it also sync. This is a JST to motherboard header that we're typical, typically used to seeing. Also in here, we have some additional like slot covers and zip ties, extra screw kit, GPU sag bracket, which is not pretty. I've never really liked their design for it. And then that's what's in the box. This, this is like a letter from the CEO. No, it's the manual. Fantex has some of the best manuals on the market in terms of easy to understand, you can see right there, there's the 480 that they fit in that spot right there. Really, really top-notch manuals. I love Fantex's manual team. So, moving back to over here, because I'm ADDing all over the place. Not a whole lot else to talk about, to be honest. We've got some nice kind of a pad right here. So if the power supply is sitting on there, um, that'll keep it from sort of vibrating. Because the fan can cause vibration in the power supply as well. Um, it also just keeps your power supply from getting scratched. It's actually touching something on the side right there. These pass-throughs right here are very convenient for um, not needing a grommet to get stuff to your motherboard, but you can get obviously cables up to your motherboard like your USB, USB 3, USB-C, HD audio. Um, where's our front panel connector? Oh, right here. Here's a front panel connector. It's completely routed separate, which makes sense. Let it come in from there. So there's our front panel connector. 
It is using a fairly standard um, layout now as a single plug, a lot easier to plug that in. But one thing I did want to test, my biggest concern is with a lot of motherboards these days, having 90 degree plugs, I want to see what happens if I try and take, say, the Asus Maximus Extreme, which is an EATX motherboard with 90 degree cables. I am curious as to whether or not they're gonna line up well enough with these grommets right here to have the cables just sort of plug right in. Now my biggest concern with that is if you have to utilize that, this bracket and any reservoir and anything attached to it is now cause for concern to maybe get in the way. All right, so let's talk about installing the motherboard. Oh, and real quick, this is where that GPU sag bracket attaches to, if you're wondering. So to try and get the motherboard in here, obviously you have a lot of stuff in the way, like the EPS power up here is kind of blocked. Rather than trying to finagle the board in there, this just slides over and then down, and you can see the RGB is just on these pogo pins, just little spring-loaded pins. And then that other cover on the back side right here, there's a thumb screw. This should now slide out like that. Again, um, contact pins on the bottom right there. That or that's actually, that's actually that's the top right there. That's actually pretty neat. I love the pogo pins are the best thing ever. Now we can take our motherboard, set it down inside like this. Well, I'll be dipped. We actually do have some room. Not a lot though. <laughs> it's not a lot of room to try and get a 24 pin into there. So this is still a concern of mine. Like this, this is, this is on Asus. Like I don't, Asus should never have made these 90 like that. They should have been facing up. They really should have been. And I'm sure they have their reasons for it. Cause like, look at this right here, the USB-C on this particular motherboard, you can see is right where that gap is. Now we also know USB-C is a big heavy it's on the bottom now. It's a big thick cable that does not like to tightly bend and the plug itself is fairly tall. So it's gonna be taller than the cover. And as you can see, th this cover will not allow us, in fact, the cover won't even fit because this is taller than the height the cover allows. Now we could just omit the cover entirely, but now that does not look nearly as clean or as pretty as say, um, you know, having that, that cover on there. So this is, this is the kind of problem where you, you know, you buy a high end case. This is a high end case, right? You buy a high end case, you buy a high end motherboard. You would think high end, high end compatible. No, in this instance, it is not like directly compatible without giving something up. And in this instance, it would be this piece. And now you would have these like that showing and it's just not, it's just not pretty. Yeah, it will not fit because the motherboard hits it. So you would have to keep, this is the kind of stuff you have to keep in mind. It's not really a problem until you start really shopping in like the ultra high end tier, like specifically with like Asus because MSI and Gigabyte and all them are not doing a lot of 90 degree plugs like that. So that is the, a board that we were considering using for his build that now we're gonna have to find an alternative for because that's just not gonna work. Like you saw how everything was gonna line up under here. You were never gonna get a 24 pin plugged in. You were never gonna get the USB-C plugged in. You were never gonna get the USB-3 plugged in. None of that was gonna work. It was all gonna be covered by that. Um, they, it looks like Fantex tried to account for that sort of stuff with this, but this is more of a niche one-off problem, to be honest. You know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's hard to say who, should be accounting for this sort of stuff, but yeah, Asus definitely developed a motherboard that has a very, <laughs> even in my giant SMA8, I was ever barely able to fit the thing. And it still puts a ton of pressure on my 24 pins and wires and stuff because they barely fit. So unfortunately it's the kind of thing that you deal with in, in that type of hardware. So we'll, we'll find a different motherboard to use. That's fine, not a big deal. So there you go. The NV9 from Fantex, this new, this is flagship. Um, it's rare that I get excited about a case because as I'm looking at it, I'm, the gears are turning in my head. Like, what would I do? That's why it's fun to look at all of the opportunity in this case. Like I could do so many different things. I could distro plates and 
radiators, radiator on the rear, which is obviously gonna be different and fun. Super clean, open interior, so that you can have nice, you know, the tubes all showing and, and just make it really a nice showcase build for a friend of mine who is an enthusiast and is looking forward to having a high and water-cooled PC again that he hasn't had in years. In fact, it's the original owner of Red Mist. You guys remember that PC from 2013, 2014, whatever that was. So it's gonna be a, a fun one. Anyway, guys, say, make sure you're uh, subscribed. That build's gonna be starting here pretty soon. And I like to take you guys along for the rides and vlog styles so that you can sort of learn as we go, because I'm guaranteed to have some mistakes. I'm guaranteed to have some parts I'm missing. I'm guaranteed to have some parts conflicts that I wasn't planning for. And I can show, show and share that with you so that you guys can learn from all of the nuances of building those types of systems. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Huge thanks once again to Fantex for sending us the MV9 to be able to take a look at uh, and sort of break down and show you its features. Um, links are down below. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.